Somebody say it. Today we come into your homes, into that prison cell, wherever you may be able to be at viewing this telecast, saying, Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. And when we sing it again, we're singing for someone who may be bound and shut in, but you're not shut out. We want to say to you that when we say it, we want God to bless you. You may be in the prison cell, but guess what? God can move in that prison right where you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to speak to all of those young men in the prison right now. That God has a call on your life. Yeah. You've been running from it a long time. Yeah. But guess what? You're in a place that God has got your full attention. Yeah. And while you're there, I'm going to pray that God stirs up the gift of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And that that your parents have been praying for, your grandmother has been praying for, your grandfather has been praying for. You are the seed that will come to pass that God has placed a great deliverance inside of. And your family will be saved and come to know Christ because of you. And the friends that are around you, their lives will change and they won't die before their time because you'll be on the right place at the right time. Do I have a witness in here? Don't do it, don't do it. Lord. Ready? Lord, you're doing in this season. Lay hands 
for your stuff and say. Please don't do it. Don't do it without me, Jesus. Can I get you to raise your voice a little louder? Come on. Now, church, I need you to help minister. I need you to lift your voice. So when you sing it, it causes your hands to go up. Because he can't do it without you. He could, but he won't because you're in his plan now. And I want you to stretch out in it. And when you stretch out in it, let a praise fall between there. Because whatever you need, God is preparing it for you. Yeah. Mitch, I'm telling you, God is preparing you. Yeah. Priscilla, oh, God is preparing you. It, Jesus. Oh, I should have a praise in here. Everybody, ready? Thank you, sister. Jesus, don't do it without me, 
energies. Ah, we're lifting up our offering. We always say to you, if you've been blessed by this telecast, help us to touch somebody else's life as we take what we have to sow into the ministry to touch you wherever you are. We here in the sanctuary of the Reaching Out for Jesus Christian Center are lifting up our offering today. Our $10, some less, some more, but they're sending whatever they got, they're giving it to give God their best. And as they're giving their tens and their fives and their dollars and their quarters, they're giving it to say to you, hold it up high, church, wave it. Let them know we're sowing into what you're giving. They're saying to you, we believe in you. We believe God has a miracle for you. And therefore, we sow. 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 We sow today. We're sowing. Without me. We're sowing. We're sowing. Don't do it. We're sowing. Without me. We're sowing. We're sowing. Don't do it. Let me share something with you while they're giving that you see that they're giving that you may be blessed. Now, church, you work with me on this. Keep holding your wave and your offerings until they come to you. Amen. There's an anointing in this. For everything that you give, God's got to return it back to you limitless. And then it will touch the hearts that with everything we give, God will double it. Now, I need every prophetic person that's in this house, every prophetic person, every prayer warrior that stands with me today as I go forth to declare these things that God is speaking about our area. Amen? Amen. Let me share with you right now, all of you that are all across this 80 corridor, going all the way up past Bloomsburg, I want to let you know revival has come to that area. The ground has been broken right now. The soil has already been turned. There's a move of God coming into your direction. There's a new move trying to come into your churches right now. The spirit of an almighty God is raising up inside the churches. Right now in the name of Jesus, every pastor that's been anointed right now, God has given you a word. He's already told you he wanted to work a miracle in that area. Let me tell you, Scranton, get ready for the miracle. Get ready, Dixon City. Get ready, get ready, Wilkes Bear. Get ready. Oh, come on, church. I need you. Get ready for what God's about to do. Oh, my God. All of them in Bloomsburg, all over in Mahoney Township. God's about to turn some things around. You haven't seen fire in your church till you see what God's about to set down in your churches now. Do I have a witness in here? you know that all the way up in Toby Hannah, oh, there's a stirring on that mountain. There's a stirring on the mountain in Toby Hannah Township. There's Let me share something with you. God is in a move in this mountain. God a move all the way over to Marshall Creek side, all the way out there by Lord's Valley. There's an upcoming of God's spirit moving, a refreshing of God, a renewing of God. We're not going to know how God is doing it, but he's going to show up anyhow. All right, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Let me share something with you. This was the last time that the devil was going to take our communities from us. Our churches 
shall be revived. Our ministries shall be revived. Our homes shall be revived. Our communities shall be revived. And when we say our communities, jobs are coming to our community. I need somebody to shout in here. for our deliverance. This is the time that you will see God move in an unusual way. And I need to remind every pastor who's been praying for God to move in a supernatural way, he's going to require more of us, more praying time, more time to be separated unto him, that he may give us the instructions and the guidance that we may need. So I speak to you, pastor, who has been overwhelmed by your congregation, overwhelmed by your own personal problems and situations. I come against it with the blood of Jesus. I command a freedom within you like never before. Your finances be freed up. Your family be freed up. Hallelujah! I command in the name of Jesus for every judicial system, every judge, that God renews your strength. You are overwhelmed, you're overworked, and you know you're underpaid. But I believe in God to rejuvenate you, re-energize you, because you have a right mind when you sit at the table and have to make decisions. Not only because you're making decisions for a community or in somebody's life, but that you have to make decisions for your own personal life. I speak life to you right now. I speak life in your body right now. what police city you're in, what city you're working as a policeman or a detective or an undercover agent. I speak life and protection around you. I command God to dispatch his angels to protect you as you leave your houses, as you go on your job. You better talk to me in here, somebody. I believe God to protect you and you're going in and you're coming out to protect your family. I believe God to protect every fireman, every, every ambulance worker, every social worker, every lawyer. I believe God to protect you right now. I believe God to do a supernatural work in you, within your family, within your children. I believe the blood of God to protect those counselors with the counsel children and counsel adults. I believe God to give you a rest in your spirit and sleep in your rest. I believe God to give you a breakthrough like never before. I believe God, I declare it, I decree it. teacher that's teaching in the school system. You will not throw in the towel. You will not give up. You'll see that the words and how you teach is getting through to your students. Somebody's going to come back and tell you thank you for everything that you've done. To every foster parent, every good foster parent, today we salute you and we clap our hands in adoration for the work that you're doing that saved someone else's household. And those of you that are caregivers, this is a message for you. And the message is, don't become weary in well-doing, for you shall reap a great reward if you faint not. 
And sometimes the people that you're taking care of can be very rough. And they treat you like you don't even exist. And right now when I said it, you just started crying. And you feel like your giving is in vain. I come to tell you that it's not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. Yes, I could have a message to say all the things and give you every scripture, but the Lord told me to pause at this point and salute you. Because people don't understand what you go through when you have to take care of others. Those of you that work in the customer field area and you're dealing with customers and sometimes they're so belligerent you can't even help them because they're so nasty and mean. But today I salute you as workers in the customer, customer service field that God will bless you for all that you do to make it right and don't let them get under your skin because you got problems at your home and when you come to job you don't want to have no problems. But I'm telling, telling, sharing with you today, it doesn't matter because God said you have the victory. <laughs> to that father that feels so helpless because you couldn't stop the divorce or the separation and you feel like you're nothing I want to say to you today be healed man be healed be healed be healed be healed be healed And continue to be the best father you can to your children. Continue in that vein. Don't you dare give up. To the woman who's fought with everything she's had. To say, I've been trying to work on this relationship for years. And it seemed to be going nowhere. And I had to leave it, Reverend. I had to. It was bad for me. It was toxic. But it's also made me bitter in letting other people come into my life. I pray the bitterness leaves you. Because God has somebody great for you. Oh, yes, it does. There is life after divorce. Do I have a witness in here? To the young man and to the young woman, especially to that child that feels like you've been bullied on and you haven't even begun to tell your parents. And the reason you can't tell your parents is because they bully your parents. You're in a double situation. They pick on you and they pick on your parents. And right now I see you, mom, you're crying right next to your child. But I want to tell you today, this is your last day. of allowing people to run over you and trample you like you're some carpet. You give everything you know you have to give, and sometimes you give overly to compensate because sometimes you feel like they pick on you, so you give just so they won't pick on you. But you don't have to pay your way for this. God has blessed you. And whatever they see is what they're going to get, but you can be a better person, and they're not going to take advantage of your children either because God's going to give you a new spirit. And you're going to break forth like a new day out of a new dawn with a sunlight shining through your clouds. <laughs> Young lady, you're God's queen. And I know you don't feel like it all the time because your mom wasn't treated like a queen and so she didn't know how to show you how to be a queen and you didn't have a dad or an uncle or a brother to say, you the queen, girl. But I'm saying to you, this transcends color, race, creed. It doesn't matter what denomination you go into. You need to understand you're God's queen. And young man, you're God's king. You have what it takes to be the best man in the world. 
there's no demon in hell after I said this to you, going to take it away from you. Because I've already sealed it. And the Holy Ghost. So I need you to make sure that you write us. Send that $10, more or less. Anyway, do your best. As we touch your life, that you can help us to touch many other lives. Amen. One hand touches the other hand, Amen. and it causes a chain reaction. Amen. So send that to P.O. Box 149, Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania, 183, ooh, ooh, 18322. Amen. Again, if somebody got a fan on, you got to turn it off. It's coming across my mic. To the Reaching Out for Jesus Christian Center, P.O. Box 149, Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania, 18322. And I challenge you that when I'm out there waving in front of our church, those of you that ride past our church, if you view our broadcast, honk your horn. I love you. I look forward to you being in this service with us very soon. Amen. Our church, from my church to me, and from me to you, we love you. Amen. Somebody give God a praise for them. Come on, clap your hands again. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. 